Well, Arsenal also still in the market. Many Arsenal fans really, really now uh, very stressed out on who is actually coming next out of the door. But <clears throat> let's start off with Yuri Tillemans because he was a priority mentioned uh, by the biggest sources in Europe that um, he will be joining Arsenal right from February and January this year. And still now, they've not signed him, but they do have an agreement in principle with the player uh, to sign uh, for them on personal terms. And it seems like Jiri Tillemans is 100% convinced that Arsenal is the club for him. Now, I think Mikel has done a very good job in terms of the trans uh, recruiting players, yeah. in and out, yeah. Mikel, Mikel and, uh, and Edu. Jiri Tillemans, is he one that completes them? Is he one player that you feel he comes into this Arsenal side mm. and that is what they are lacking? I think the fact that Arsenal, of course, Mikel Arteta and Edu uh, want to create more chances and also scoring more goals at the club. Uh, I think it's one of the reasons why they want Tills. But of course, it takes us back to what we we're talking about. Uh, that is uh, what Leicester City, of course, do. We, we, mm. Like when it comes to selling their players, of course, uh, they will rate their players high. But most of the times, I think. I don't remember. I think it's only Ben Chul who has at least tried to do something good, like before, like ever since mm. he left. That is Leicester. But of course, if you try to look at some of the players that have left, la like uh, have left Leicester, like Leicester City, I think it was only Ngolo Kante. I think who has I done I some. No, good I think job. Ngolo Kante had, has had a very of good course, time at Chelsea. Yeah, mm. I think Brad Mahrez has had a, had a, has had a very good time at, at Man uh, City. Yeah, at Manchester mm. City. Mm. Um, Daniel Drinkwater just disappeared like that. Yeah, you know, no, for Chelsea, no, 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 just yeah, disappeared yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Mm. Ben uh, Chilwell, Harry, Harry not, Harry yet, Maguire. not yet, but I think with Chilwell, the mm. ceiling is still there. Mm. You, you never know. Uh, Harry Maguire really struggled, okay. has really, really, really struggled. And I think he <laughs> finds himself in a very bad situation, mm. coming into a very bad Man United, Man United side, and then you're given the captainship. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think Tillemans, of course, of course. I think Tillemans would suit Arsenal and Mikel Arteta, mm. though. But is, is 35 million pounds worth it? For a player whose contract runs down in the air, I think that's why Arsenal is scared of him. Of course, it's one thing that Arsenal is scared because his contract is remaining with just one year. But of course, uh, like we don't disagree that he's a good player. Of course, we like we've seen him what he can do at the club, and uh, uh, trying to see the style of Mikel Arteta. Of course, I think he is one player that you would think will be fitting in his style. Yeah, yeah. yeah like he's very fast. Like he's a fast player. He's that player that runs for uh, like uh, maybe like uh, like all the like the free. So I, I think. Uh, Arsenal are trying to uh, to bring in, of course, a tailsman will also increase, of course, on their goal chances, like we've seen at the club. Because I think uh, that place we're only having, uh, that is uh, the captain, uh, so far. Martin Odegaard. Yeah, Martin Odegaard. Who, like who we've not seen this yeah, season. Yeah, and Smith -Rose. I think adding tailsman uh, will also bring in that squad depth, of course, at the club. And also, uh, the aims of Arsenal are uh, going back to the UEFA Champions League, I think, will be fulfilled by bringing in, like, such a player who we all know that he can also uh, maybe be, go like, good. Like, uh, that is a. Uh, behind, of course, the strikers. Yeah, mm. and uh, and Jaka because if he comes in, then in my opinion, Jaka walks straight out of the team. Mm. He may not walk out of the team, but uh, the thing that is that, uh, for example, at Manchester City, of course, mm. having that, that, that kind of, of players, squad rotation, yeah, 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 like, yeah. like squad rotation, I, I, it would be I, good I, for Mikel Arteta. And I don't, but, but, but still, I don't think Jaka starts ahead of uh, Tillemans in pecking order. It will be especially safe. if you want to play I mean if you want to play a four two three one maybe maybe Jaka. But if you want to play four one four one, mm. if you want to play uh with single pivot, then uh, and you want to play with two attacking number eights, two attacking midfielders, then Telemans gets gets in front of Jaka. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on Jaka as, as as an Arsenal player? Is he is is, is 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 he a player that Arsenal miss? Because last campaign he did pick up an injury early in the season mm. and there was a void, a real void, and Arsenal fans really missed him. And when he came back, he had a fantastic season, by the way. He had a very, very consistent season. I think he wasn't Arsenal's best player, but he was our most consistent player. Of course. Uh, very consistent. Is that player, I think, uh, like if you try to look at the Arsenal squad per now, of course, is that player that you think has a lot of experience? Uh, he's that's been, been there for a while. Like, like he's been there. He has been so many uh, good competitions. I think he's one player that you think Arsenal, of course, uh, may want at all times. And of course, the fact that he can shift. Uh, not just in that pivot, of course, in that in that number, but he's a player that uh, you can change, of course, in variety of numbers. So I think is one of the reasons why, uh, uh, like Arsenal, need him as a player. And of course, the other thing that we're talking about, it will depend maybe on what the coach will want to play. Mm. Uh, that is at the pivot. But of course, if you want to play with one pivot, I think um, then you may know, uh, like you, you never know, maybe uh, maybe party, maybe out. Cause so far, yeah, but me, I, I, I he has not. Mm. Mikael is going to go 
if Pate picks up an injury, mm. I will play Jaka in the single pivot. Of course. And he has done it well. Yeah. Of course, we've seen him. Uh, like even before, uh, Thomas, l- like like Thomas Pate came, I think he was doing it. Uh, yeah, he, he yeah, tried to like play like him really there. Well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So Arsenal, we, we, I mean, you're still looking at Lucas Paqueta as well, but uh, uh, Tillman is still the priority. And, and you know, a few other links with uh, Sajj Milinkovic-Savic. Mm. But I think Tillman is the priority. If they can get him, for me, it would be a fantastic window. It would really be a fantastic window. But also on the among the forwards, they've been linked with now two um, very exciting ones. Pedro Neto mm-hmm. at Wolves. Cool. Now, Wolves have signed Goncalo Guedes from Valencia, 27 million uh, pounds. And it has, it has created this kind of belief in, um, in the media, especially the Express breaking the story, that if they've signed Guedes, then definitely... Uh, they're losing Pedro Neto. I, I personally, I don't think so. Yes, they do have. Um, they have Chan. They have uh, Podence. They have Guedes now and, and, and Neto. But his contract runs down in 2027. I don't think it, it. You know, there is any factor that actually will push them to sell early. But if, if Arsenal get po- got Pedro Neto, is is he another player that you feel um, has an you know an excessive amount of quality? That we've not seen this Arsenal side. Of course, he's a young, talented player. Uh, the fact that we know uh, that Arsenal, of course, also wants a like variety of players that we yeah. said, like uh, trying to shift maybe the team. Of course, Pedro Neto, we've seen him in the like in Wolverhampton. He has been like he has done it. He's a young player, like who is very aggressive. The, I think uh, being added in the Arsenal squad, of course, it will be good. That is for Arsenal. But uh, the other, like it will go back to uh, the question. Maybe we we'll go back to the uh, as into the coach. Like who be? Of course, we all know. Uh, that uh, Gabriel Jesus, of course, has to start. That is for the club. But of course, apart from Gabriel Jesus, who will be there? Of course, we saw Eddie Nketa, like signing a contract previously. But of course, it will be so many questions to Mikel Arteta on how he will be rotating his club. But I think Pedro Neto will bring uh, so much that is to, to the club, to Arsenal. Be by the, the fact that they are going to be playing uh, like in so many competitions yeah, uh, yeah. this season. So I think you want to be having so many uh, so many players because we saw it i think it was last season or also some previous seasons where arsenal most of their players got injured, injured because yeah. they lack especially players. january yeah of course yeah. so they lack players who could, like who uh, could feature in for others so i think having a big squad who hope arsenal maybe succeed uh, in this uh, like tournaments that they are going to be playing in uh, pedro neto uh, jeremy pino mosa diabe cody Gakpo, those are the wingers arsenal looking at mm. and leroy sane i mean Let's talk about Leroy Sane for a moment. He's worked with Mikel, by the way, at, Ma- at Manchester City. Mm. Bayern still feel he's not unsellable. So they feel if you bring in the right amount of money, they could sell. We know that they've spent some money uh, on Manchester League, close to 90 million euros. Um, so they would be very, very happy. They would be more than happy to just get something back in their pocket. Uh, Leroy Sane, if you add him to that Arsenal attack, Sane... Gabriel Jesus and Bukayo Saka. Mm. Does that make us no title contenders? Of course, it would be wonderful for the club, but I don't think at this moment Bayern can do that mistake. <laughs> of course, they want to build a squad that is going to be opening them maybe in the f- uh, in the next five years. That's why you're seeing uh, most of these players that are around them. Of course, they're young players. The yeah. likes of uh, uh, Gnabli, Lole Sane, the one we're talking about. Just the lead as well. Y- yeah, of course, the lead. Uh, Mosiala. So all of these are young players. And uh, it's one thing that we were talking about, uh, uh, of course, earlier that uh, w- they had that era of course of the thomas mullers and uh Diane robin yeah, Frank course, Ribery, yeah. so they wanted to shift to the new uh, to the new era so i don't think that uh Bayern can do such a big uh, mistake by mm. the way of letting uh, one of those players that you think is so talented to believe but of course to us you know, if they get such a player i think you can't miss them out of course uh like adding them maybe on some of the title yeah. containers because of the club. But i think that's what arsenal lacking last campaign they had so many young players mm. that um you know, they af- it affected us in, 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 in periods of panic, in periods of um, of decision making. And, uh, decision by making. By yeah, it, like it, it really, affe- yeah, it really affected mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. And if you bring in players like Sane that have played, because it's, it's, this is his second time to play in the Bundesliga from mm-hmm. Schalke to, to City and then back to Bayern. Yeah. Uh, he's played in the Premier League as well. He's worked under the manager. And I, I don't think there is anyone who underrates Sane. He's... He has the ability to give you and the numbers. And he did it by the at Manchester. And he did it at, at Manchester. Yeah, City. Like it's just that he wanted maybe uh, to shift to German, yeah. uh, like where he's born. So I don't think it like to me. Of course, uh, I don't think it would be possible for him. Of course, uh, you are in yeah, like in uh, 
as in England, uh, in a bigger club. Of course, Man City Pana, of course, is the big club. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I don't think that he can come back, of course, coming to Arsenal. Of course, Arsenal, uh, the way you see Mikel Arteta has tried to build his territory, of course, it's good. But I don't think that it will be possible for Royal Sane. But of course, if he comes, he will be uh, a very important player that is for the club. Well, Arsenal also interested in Sandro Tonali at AC Milan. Uh, an offer has been made. An offer has been rejected. They are also interested in um, a young, talented winger at FC Porto, Pepe. The offer has been turned down. And uh, reports from Abola in Portugal claim that Arsenal will try to continue looking at the possibility of signing the young Portuguese player. Now, there is only one player that we will talk about and we will conclude this Arsenal, uh, you know, Arsenal uh, you know, session, and that is Nicola Pepe. Now, they are searching for a winger, and he's there. The, I, 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 I think he knows the moment they sign one, my number, uh, my number of games, my chances to play for this, uh, you know, Arsenal project and what, what, whatever kind of, you know, uh, you know, revolution is, is, is on are over. Why has Pepe failed? Why has the Pepe prospect not come out? He's, he's done very well at Leo and he's Arsenal's record signing. And when Arsenal spend over 72 million pounds on you, whether it includes money laundering or it doesn't, uh, yeah, yeah. when Arsenal spend that huge, there is a reason as to why. And I still feel he's one of the most talented players in that squad, but he just doesn't. I mean, why isn't it coming out? <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe there is a misunderstanding to me, to my understanding between him and the coach. Of course, we know him. Like we said, he's one of those talented players. We've seen him playing. Uh, we've seen him, of course, coming on the field and doing whatever he wants with the ball. So yeah. I think uh, the fact that the coach does not give him, like, does not give him enough time that is on the field. It's one of yeah, those reasons that has limited that, him. That 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 happened. Last campaign, he didn't get the minutes. Of course. But the last campaign before that, mm. I felt like Miklata tried, what you know, so hard to make it work for Nicola Pepe, mm. and he did put in a good couple of you know performances for Arsenal in the Europa League. Mm. Uh, they made it to the semi-finals, and that is it. I don't think he's been a player that. We can trust. Maybe though. Like he's a player that Arsenal can trust. But maybe the alive of uh Bakaya Saka. Of course you remember yeah. that very season I that uh Pepe was uh, was brought to into Arsenal. Mm. The very season that of course uh Bakayo Saka came. Of course yeah, he and, and shined. Like, uh, of course and shined because Pepe uh most of the games he was given of course uh playing time. But most of the times that uh Bukayo Saka could come in, of course for him is more direct than Nicolas Pepe. So that's why maybe the problem came from because uh you're competing in the same number. But your opponent or your fellow is more direct than so I think it's where the problem came from because Nicolas Pepe is that is like that kind of player who was not so much direct, but Bukayo Saka of course could deliver anything. He was so so I think maybe that's where the problem came from. And but and, and Pepe should be ashamed. Mm. Pepe should be absolutely ashamed mm. that we sit on this table and we say he has lost a battle to Bukayo Saka, of a course. 19 of year course. old, he lost a 20 year old Bukayo Saka. Mm. He should be ashamed of himself. Of course. I mean, because if he had lost the battle to probably Alexis Sanchez, mm. that is understandable. That is understandable. Right? Mm. But personally, Pepe and uh, it's, it's the same argument I made for Anthony Martial. Mm. Really talented players, and I don't want to even say they, they're not made for the Premier League, but they're it's effortless. I do not see them trying. It's, it's not the same as, as I look at Gabriel Martinelli, mm. as I look at Mo Salah, I as I look at Kevin De Bruyne, trying to make things happen. I think that's the only problem with it. Like, uh, yeah, like with Nicolas Pepe, he's, like, he's not that kind of player who tries, like who wants to, maybe to prove to the coach that I can yeah. do this. Because most of the times, he's brought in uh, in the field. Of course, he has not tried that so much hard to to tell the coach, of course, that I can do this. So I, I think maybe that's one of the problems that like the player is having as himself like he is not that player uh, that can fight maybe for the yeah. number like let me say that like that so i think it's one thing that uh, has made him maybe uh being benched all yeah, of the and time he, he, he now co looks completely lost mm. because if you watch the first 10 15 minutes of that crystal palace game mm. arsenal players were working like absolute monsters and it's that player who doesn't do that and it's, it's not going to work for you like an yeah, absolute course, monster and i think his mentality mm. Is, is one that is really going to cost him his career. You need to be 
fighting. You need your winger. You need to be running. Modern day wingers are playing as um, as fullbacks as, as well. Fullbacks, yeah. mm. If if you cannot do that, mm. it's going to be because I felt I had I, in my opinion when I was doing my list, I thought if he goes to a club like Severe, if he goes to a club like AC Milan, if he goes to a club like Newcastle, because I think with Pepe he has a point to prove. Mm. The question is, can he prove that point? Because he's he, he doesn't have the heart, of he course. doesn't have the hunger, yeah. uh, you know, to, to prove to, to prove. But if he goes to a club like Newcastle, mm. we we have we have, we have players like Alanson Maxima who are literally running the show. Mm. And look at how Maxima is working day in day out. If he, for me, if he went to a club like Newcastle, he would be the star man. But is mm. he willing to go? Is he willing to pay the price of becoming a, a star <laughs> again? I don't think he's willing. Of course, even bef- like before the season started, he said that he's not going anywhere. Yeah. Like, he, like he wants to stay. Yeah, he wants to stay. Yeah, fight for the number. number. But of course, uh, the other thing that you talked about, of course, of him, not uh, that player who will fight, of course, uh, for the But I think it's one of the things that why Mikel Ateta has left him. Because Mikel Ateta wants all of the players that are on the field, of course, uh, to be fighting. That is for the ball. So, and I think Nicolas Pepe is one of those players that will not be in the of course even losing the ball s- most of the times you see him like he's not that player who goes uh back to get the ball so yeah. i think it's one of the reasons as to why Mikel Arteta has been letting him out yeah. of the squad and i think uh with him continuing with that i don't think that he will succeed at us yeah and personally i feel the manager for the first time i'll back him i think he's been absolutely sincere and honest uh, with him he's given him a clean slate he's told him i'm gonna make you a player that can compete with the others, mm. but Nicola Pepe has not given him, you okay. know, given them, give, give, given himself mm. uh, that chance. So, in terms of the transfers and what is happening around your clubs, um, that is it. Arsenal still trying to find uh, a few more signings. Man United really trying to work hard. Uh, in the comment section, you know, let us know which players do you think your team uh, or your club should be signing. Chelsea still in the market um, as well. Liverpool look like they have rested their case. Are they safe? Are they okay? I feel like they need someone in midfield. Just, I mean, I just feel like they just need anyone in midfield. I don't know what Pep Guardiola, of course, is he, like he's looking at. Because I think uh, something like two seasons back, uh, you do remember that season when Virgil van Dijk got an yeah. injury. Of course, they struggled so much. So, uh, they are squad depth. Uh, it's one thing that, uh, of course, uh, I do worry about. But we've mm. seen him, I think, trying to get in some young talents in the midfield. Uh, maybe more you worry to me, maybe in back. I think he needs to get some uh, some players because uh, yes, Joel Motip is there, uh, the likes of Gomez. But I think you need some yeah, Konate is there. But I think he needs to get some uh, some other players because they are going to be taking part in very competitive yeah. league. And of course, and Champions and League and the, and the, the calendar league. is mm. and the going to be of course very going to very be very. very remember, fixed. most of their players are going to be taking part in the, in the World uh, Cup. Yeah, in the World Cup. And yeah. of course, that same period after the World Cup is when you have so many games in the Premier League and also uh, in the UEFA Champions. So I need, I think. He needs to uh, to increase uh, like uh, on his squad to be competitive. Thank you so much for watching the 90 More podcast with myself, Kosi, and Mustafa. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and wherever you can find us on our socials in the comments uh, in the description below. See you.